the rest of the story. Oh, it was Henry's company, all right. It even bore his name. But in the business world, your investors own you. So Henry's investors owned him. And there were five of them, in fact, each of whom had put up $10,000 to get Henry's company started. You're the designer, they told Henry. You're the expert. And thus, in return for Henry's designs and expertise, his backers awarded him a 1,000 shares of his own company stock, and then they stepped back and awaited results. But now here's the problem. In the past, everywhere Henry had gone, he had worked on his own projects on company time. Now he was doing it again. The company had his own name on it now, but as before, he was caught conducting personal business when he was supposed to be attending to corporate business. Henry's investors, concerned for the security of their investment, sought the advice of a much respected local manufacturer named Leland. Mr. Leland agreed to visit Henry's company and assess the situation and make an appropriate recommendation, and he did. The bottom line result was that Henry was forced out of his own business. Now, if you think it's complicated up to here, it's going to get more complicated, but stay with me. His backers, forcing Henry out of his own business, gave him a $900 cash settlement on the condition that his designs stayed with the firm. Then they showed him the door. The company was promptly renamed, and that would have been that. But Henry, stung by this setback, was nevertheless more determined than ever to succeed in his field, the fledgling automobile industry. And six years later, in 1908, he presented to the American public the car that made him famous, the Model T. Yes, of course, Henry was Henry Ford, but this is the rest of the story. Ford's first automobile company, the Henry Ford Company, the one he lost in 1902, continued to operate based on Ford's own automotive blueprints. In other words, they kept making Ford cars, but they didn't call them Fords. One of the leading figures of that company was Mr. Leland, Henry Leland, the Detroit manufacturer who had helped to oust Ford in the first place. Leland eventually left the corporation and started one of his own, the Lincoln Motor Company. But late in 1921, the Lincoln Motor Company filed for bankruptcy. And nobody wanted to bid on the assets except... <laughs> that's right. Nobody wanted the assets except Henry Ford. And there's something else that you may have guessed after acquiring the Lincoln Motor Company. Ford had its founder, Henry Leland, booted out. And I mean rudely evicted from the premises, personal belongings and all. Fair play, Ford decided, because that's the way he had been treated by Leland. But the turnaround did not stop there, for when Ford's early backers in league with Henry Leland bounced him out of his company in 1902, they kept Ford's automotive design, but they changed the name of the Henry Ford Company to the Cadillac Automobile Company. So now you see the most prestigious Ford product, the Lincoln, came from the man who built the first Cadillac. But the first Cadillac was really a Ford. And now you know the rest of the story.